clean enough. Like I think I got a wheel bearing that's going out on the driver front. vibration my steering wheel pretty much seems to go away when I hit 60 I can feel it more and I can hear it so doing a highway test Just got the transmission fluid changed out and checked engine oil that was good I'm actually having to run 2050 for the engine oil to make sure it doesn't smoke at 316,000 on the drivetrain so I'm hoping it's not the transmission when I get turned around here I'll check the bearings on the inner drive shaft see if there's any play on the outside of the drive shafts try to cross eliminate what the vibration is because I'm not running commercial tires so shouldn't be vibrating like that inspection basically I used to have a trash can here but I guess the county's getting so lazy this is a DOT thing you guys can't even sponsor a trash can huh my uh, cars issue so now after changing it in town I was able to put it in fourth and it maintained the gear until I hit a bump so Thankfully, I haven't lost my fourth gear all the way. Uh, I'm going to pull out the receipts here real quick on the gear oil that I put back in it. It's supposed to have 75, 80. Uh, I'm going to pull out the receipts here real quick on the gear oil that I put back in it. It's supposed to have 75, 80. Uh, it's not what I put back in it, that's for sure. Okay. So first of all, see I went in on the 18th and then the 21st was the last one I'm, I got. So it's 80W90 that I got. So I had $5, I think I had like just shy of $10. So I had enough to get one. I knew I had to get three more. And this one is actually the fifth one. So online, because my manual, this, to me, it's trash, it's useless. It doesn't have my engine in it, doesn't have my transmission in it either. So like, get rid of that one. But anyway, so there's, it took a total of four, like four and a half, which allegedly it was only supposed to have a 3.75 capacity. So that was kind of weird. Anyway, so I'm missing a receipt in between this. And this is the bad thing about using food assistance card and then using, um, uh, a business expense account card that receipt I threw away because I thought it was only a food receipt so try to keep my freak my purchases separate sometimes it doesn't work out so anyway the weird thing is <laughs> the three 
that I picked up in between. Out of the three that I picked up in between, one of them was a 140.90 weight. I didn't notice until I had half of it put in. Now I'm checking it while it's not running. So it being clear up to this top mark, that's correct. Because when I check it at running, it's right at the full line. And it's warm now too, so it's a little bit higher than it would be just doing an idle warm up. But I gotta get my gloves on, get under the car, and check the axles. Anyway, it's running so tight now that I can. I have a hard time actually putting it in first gear. Yeah, it, it sounds like brand new tight. So. I don't even know how to like measure out that kind of viscosity change. It's supposed to be 7590, got an 8590 in it with one core to 14090. Or it's the opposite. Either way around at Walmart they're the same price. I only looked at the freaking total <laughs> at checkout. I didn't notice the different tagging number. So turned out to actually be good. I it's running great. Um, now just kind of narrow down what the vibration is. Yeah, that's definitely my vibration. I'm waiting for my book, my new repair manual. What's this? Uh, I think it's pronounced Chilton. Which, from my understanding, they, they don't make them anymore. It's all made, made by Haynes. Those bearings, most likely they're pressed, which will suck because that means I have to pull the transmission. I don't think they make actually uh, a tool like that where it would mount somehow on the inside of my framework of the body be able to press the bearing in if that's the case that's why I think you have to pull it um, and there's not an actual threaded hole in the shaft there's like a little dimple um, and I think I'm pretty much SOL on that but it's not bad enough that I have the emergency of replacing the transmission exists it's close but not that bad yet. The weird thing is on the engine oil though, putting the 2050 in it stopped, stopped all the smoking. Um, but when I was pouring that uh, 140 90 gear oil, it was like an STP additive. It was that, like it was the same thickness as that. Um, so I topped off my oil that was maybe half a quart low uh, with the 8090 instead of putting the STP in it and that took away the minor tick that this last series of the 1.8 engine had and it's pretty notorious for having like a, a slight chatter uh, of a ticking sound usually just because it gets an air pocket in between it uh, and it takes a little bit to get that out um, running it typically does it, but it's usually heard at idle. And I don't know if I had showed, I'm pretty sure I had showed in a different video. That I had to cut out that rubber because I reversed the boot to create a first water barrier. But that let me know that that probably partial more reason why it's kicking out even though it's not directly touching it between the flex of the transmission mount engine mounts the little bit of bounce when I hit a bump in town kicking it out I think what I got to do is actually cut me a slot into the metal because that four inch lift that that would basically be the third modification 
that it affected, which was steering knuckle had to be extended a half an inch, lower radiator hose had to be a longer custom one that was flexible. So this would be the third one, third modification. You can kind of see at the angle, like how it's been slamming up against that edge, shifting. So I've actually got second gear and fourth gear that if it wasn't rubber, I could probably get a grinder in there and just grind it out. So I may have to just like take a shot at drilling and catch it close enough where I can grind it out that way. Because with my trailer, being stolen and all my tools being in there it's not a whole lot I can do so I got a, a step drill my drill and my electrical cable and hopefully that restores the fourth gear gives me the playback but yeah tremendous news to be able to go from the 7580 up to higher grades and basically that being sufficient difference to be almost kind of like equivalent to a sleeve um, really happy about that. Um, the car's at one ton after adding the extra steel underbody framework. All right, so browse to that real quick. I stopped at that one before I got a skid plate. There's that lift portion section I had to cut out the side to get the exhaust in there that protects my drive shaft as it ties in and basically tees in To the rear and that's basically the rest of the framework and then all that intentionally was designed to be foot compartment for two more rear seats this is where I'll build an exterior roll bar later So, yeah, definitely quite the freaking champ. It's nice to know that I'm going to change up uh, fluids a little bit and make up a difference. And I think I got lucky on this one. Um, I found another year Subaru steering knuckle that was just a little bit longer and it was just enough to get on there. I usually try to keep it very clean. I spent a lot of time last time cleaning out back here. So I'm still baffled how I got water in it. Because that dipstick, even though it's a short one, it's still high enough. But looks like it's spitting out some. So I guess it's time to replace the O-ring. But from its height... can see through. There it is. So about this height, and I would have had water coming in the car through this foam because I haven't got this plate on here yet when I cut all that out. So I don't think I went through water that deep on BLM because I had the commercial tires. When I have them on there, I have a foot clearance, like a stock Jeep. So that would have put me in like close to 16 inches of water. 
not more. So I'm pretty sure it was just from pressure washing it. I didn't get a whole lot in there, just enough to make it a little bit gray. But that was enough to add some unnecessary wear for sure to the fourth gear because it was the first one that showed signs of having problems. Well, one might ask why commercial tires, right? Well, because to get to the Wild Horse Reserve, the side I go to, had to go through the back and get and go past the gas plant. And keep going and going. I remember, I think it's like 13 miles back there. Until eventually. Get you back there to the, the edge of the book cliffs. But unfortunately, I can't go play. Well, because I got a. They classify it as a suspension, a child support hold on my license. So I'm restricted to basically ordinary, common, ordinary, necessary things like income related. Um, so recreational technically is probably what the legislators should actually put in it like you're restrained from recreation so like that health department official um, thinking that she's the DMV and she's got like all this control I mean might as well I mean they've got through the district court their fraud the court like that's extreme internal fraud nobody's checking nobody's watching and it's amazing, during the COVID, these people got paid still for doing nothing for the most part. Um, it's almost like they need to come back down to a normal wage and prove that they can do their jobs again and it come back in compliance before they get what the current wage is. Now, there's gotta be a cut somewhere. They can't get paid good money for not doing their job and absolutely refusing it and then doing criminal acts on top of it. Uh, it's absurd. Absurd is not the right word. It's outrageous. And the most outrageous part is that I am being sanctioned for being in compliance with the joint divorce decree parenting plan. Tax return gets sanctioned. I'm paying for her non-compliance, but my license is sanctioned. I mean, this is how delusional the health department. And it doesn't stop there. It goes clear through the District 21 court, clean up to um, an administrative review. I, administrative review has been absolute waste. They just pretty much act like they're dumbfounded. Like they have no clue what their job is and their arguments and their emails are just as absurd. Like they do not even know the freaking law. And they're supposed to be the ones that are the check and balance uh, of these lower entities. It's, it's astonishing. Um, yeah, a pay cut for sure. I mean, and it seems like it's across the board. Pretty much emergency personnel, they earned their keep during the COVID. Not any of the other offices, because the offices are supposed to be the oversight for the departments. But here locally, District 21, I'm still, I'm still grasping to find a department that's doing their job correctly and not abusing it. So what it comes down to, like this video will be in the playlist for the uh, ticket that I got for a suspended license, which is actually a license that's under restraint. So the officer issued me an expired, fictitious uh, summons that basically is supposed to be what state troopers have. I've, I've gotten two others from state troopers and their full sheets are not half sheets. Uh, so whatever this local PD is doing and coming up with their fictitious forms, using old expired forms, um, like there needs to be some serious uh, replacement of heads, internal affairs uh, on these agencies because they're just absolutely out of control. And the court should know this as well. They should know what are fictitious forms, what are valid forms and stuff like that. Whether this gets past the city or the municipal court, I don't know. 
but it can always be escalated beyond the city court. But I'll have to jump past county and district because they're a legal combined court. So that pretty much takes it to the court of appeals right away. So basically if the legislators can actually start doing their jobs um, and like get terminology in there, you know, get restricted recreational driving in there instead of leaving it vague so nobody understands, well, okay, so you're res restricted driving, you can go work and do all this stuff, but what are you actually sanctioned from doing? Because law enforcement doesn't have a clue. They assume it's suspended. You're not supposed to be driving at all. And so does the stupid health department. But just like I told law enforcement um, the last time they kidnapped me from Lowell's parking lot for no probable cause. Um, oh, because I had contact by sending an email to my ex, a video evidence of uh, the child support services lady refusing to do her job. Anyway, the point was, is that I told the, the officers that were in the room on the last kidnapping, the calm, the other guy that got arrested for sleeping on the sidewalk, I believe, um, that, you know, you're going to have to excuse the officers because they're only as stupid as the cannabis makes them. So that would be the same definement of the health department too. Legislators can't do their jobs. The state can't do their jobs of filling out the forms completely with legislative law so they can understand it. So really, from what I'm seeing, it's bad. It's horrible here on a local level, but on a state level, they're not doing their jobs either. Well, I guess I gotta sacrifice my $10 to tobacco. I do feel because I gotta pull the sheriff's report on the stolen trailer anyway to see what they did not do just basically gave him general direction on how easily he would have been able to scope out and find my trailer so I gotta come at this a little bit differently this time So there's that person's driveway. And it comes up to here, there's a sign, and there's a driveway. Okay, so the sheriff officer and his pickup truck, he was parked there. Basically, that should be sufficient enough according to the state law of conspiracy to prove PD and the sheriff's conspiracy, the theft of the trailer not acting in good faith doing their jobs and even attempting to look for it just adds to the proof of the conspiracy. I figured I'd use the credit card while I got it and keep all the business expenses in one account a little bit better.
basically the last intersection and then this time frame that's what I'll know as as evidence for the judges the courts review like they don't need to watch the whole video but that time frame is what's specific to the case that lives around here he said this section is what he jogged morning and night at night he seen the trailer there come that morning it was gone basically where the campers are right there this little section here is where the only place I seen like three cars I think it was two cars and one pickup truck gather up while at night on two different occasions while I was assembling the trailer out here on what I thought was BLM but this section actually according to the county assessors is county property I thought it, I was already on BLM so I would have been right about in here what I don't see is the five gallon container with the ball in the concrete. So I left that here for the sheriff to basically do fingerprinting on it because it was the only thing that was remaining. That'd be one thing I'll be looking in their report to see if they did anything. So looking at that a little bit more like the sheriff was literally parked right in the middle of the driveway wow the focus is getting bad on that. Very nice. That's how a conservative ditch should be. Anyway. So it's agricultural land. It wouldn't be illegal unless the gate was like closed for me to walk on the property knock on the shop and ask if any of it was for sale. Maybe leave a plastic bag around the handle or something. The contact number. Outside that, going into anything or fenced would be illegal. supposed to be the softer touch uh, deer and get so wound up about unexpected visitors
times 10. I can't see further than that. Is that headlights? Yeah, it sure is. Must be working on the canal. Lots of old equipment. Got a new one in there. Very nice. And it's outside the, the case subject information again, but now Colorado needs to be serious about their conservation, seeing there's multiple other states that use Colorado water. So it all should be concreted in. There should be no excuse for Colorado not reinvesting the water funds back into conservation. Let's see if I catch the address. see any posting there but approximately 1049 maybe 1050 Maybe, oops, I was not supposed to turn it off. Calm down a little bit. There's other options besides always harvesting. Now in Colorado, they like to do mazes. My apologies to Lowell's that You guys were the best commercial business in town. But state law, once it's 14 consecutive days, that's sufficient to establish temporary residency. So the number of parking spots probably help, but I've got a concrete bag. I'm, I've got it in the car, bagged up, working on a project for an outdoor cooker, basically. So, I'm just gonna pick the second spot back here. And the day, I guess I get challenged by management. I'll explain the statutory law and plenty of video evidence to prove it. But see also that same little window of segment here back at Lowell's that can be used in the other cases proving the kidnapping of law enforcement from my temporary residency falsely stating the incident happened at my ex's. So basically if there's a, a moral to the story uh, the general public basically has to be uh, wiser than all the con artists.